Shalom Chavrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Uh, today, I got a very interesting, at 11.40 a.m., a text from our correspondent sister Esther out of the Golan Heights there, and she writes here to me, Brother, there is uh, a news conference with Obama that will be at any minute. I'm paraphrasing this, by the way. Uh, we are almost at DEFCON 1, that is here in the United States. In fact, looking up uh, online, Fox News uh, had already reported that, uh, some of the uh, people that they were interviewing today was that we should go to DEFCON 1. What is the reasoning? ISIS is in America. Uh, thanks to the open borders in the South, as I, we reported here to you on Israeli News Live a little while back, we had reported that they were definitely bringing in uh, Muslim terrorists and had been flying them in and bringing them across the southern border. So at any, time, at any rate, now that there is a huge terrorist threat in America, and uh, finally, uh, Obama does come on and make this conference, this, uh, this uh, announcement earlier today. Uh, she went on to say, uh, they're even going to go against Russia. These are the last years, just like the angel told Daniel, pray for us in Israel in peace of Jerusalem. Shabbat Shalom with love. Uh, now listen, it's very important. We're asking your prayers as well because we are headed home. Uh, we are only days away from going back to Jerusalem, uh, back to Israel. And so we're asking for your prayers for Israel as well as for our family. And as I've said to you many times before, I shouldn't even have, shouldn't, don't even mean to say it here on a news broadcast, but it's important. If you want to do something for the Jewish people, this is the hour. You're fixing to see Daniel's 70th week begin. Okay, now quickly, let's take a look at... Um, uh, also, she, let me mention the rest of her uh, text here. Russia and Chechnya have vowed to crush ISIS and told America to take heed. Chechnya told the ISIS speaker they're going to send, uh, send them straight to hell on uh, Instagram and told ISIS Russia has worthy sons and will be happy to rid the world of these, well, bloop, uh, Illegitimate children, that's the right word. It's a different word, but it's okay word to be said. Bastards, I'll just say it like it is. Told ISIS, don't even say the name of Putin. Uh, wow, that ain't our leader. So anyway, it's, it's, let me just share with you real quick. I'm going to bring you to a news clip. And what's kind of ironic about this, we're seeing the hand of God working everything here. We had actually intended to set our trip to Israel back a couple of months to try to be able to speak more around the country here to the different groups uh, to encourage people as we were before we went home, uh, especially in light of the Vatican rising to power and gobbling up this, this whole world thing, using their muscle everywhere they can. But in light of that, um, the Lord really began to deal with me just the other day, and I told my wife, we must go. It's time to go. We have to go now. Uh, so we have uh, purchased our tickets. We're just going by faith, uh, and we're getting ready to go. But anyhow, the other point I wanted to bring up to you is that our daughter, Ariella, who's been very sick, been in the hospital. Uh, she, we got her out last night, brought her home. She started to feeling better today. Thanks, Thank God, and we thank you for your prayers for her. Uh, Ariella is not quite six years old as of yet, still very, very small, very young. And uh, she comes in. I'm with her mother because her mother has been a little sick as well. And so she comes into the room with me and her mother, and she said, Daddy, you must come quickly. There is very important news that you must know about. It really surprised me, I, I, and I went I went quickly because I'm thinking five-year-old. I mean, well, I thought, well, maybe somebody sent her. Maybe my son sent her to our room, but it wasn't the case. She was in there by herself. The news was on. She was playing, and for some reason, she comes and tells me this. Well, ironically, what was on was Obama was giving the address that Sister Esther told me was about to happen at any moment. And he speaks about the coalition that they're forming. And Obama even says in here, he hints around that they're planning to send ground troops in order to defeat ISIS. Uh, at, at any rate, before I play the clip, I'll just say this real quick. I asked Ariella afterwards, I said, what made you to come tell daddy about this news? She said, I don't know, daddy. Just something in me says that you must know this. It was very important for you to know. 
God can use anybody he chooses. Amen. So anyway, let's take a look at this news clip uh, here. I believe that's Newsmax. Let's take a look at that now. In the meantime, President Obama spoke earlier today from the 2014 NATO summit in Wales. The president talked about efforts to combat ISIS militants in the Middle East and hinted that Americans may see boots on the ground. We can support them from the air, but ultimately we're going to need a, a strong ground game and we're also going to need uh, the Sunni tribes in many of these areas to recognize that their future is not with the kind of uh, fanaticism that uh, ISIL represents. In the meantime, the U.S. says it's working with the international community to build what they call a core coalition to battle the Islamic State. Sources say the British Prime Minister and the French President told President Obama that he needs to do more than simply order airstrikes against ISIS. Meanwhile, France says they're ready to join the U.S. and other allies to take action against ISIS. The French president spoke at the NATO summit in Wales and says his country will join the coalition of countries willing to make a move on Islamic State militants. He declined to comment further on what type of action the coalition would take. And former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell and his wife were convicted. As you see, the coalition that they're trying to form, France, is actually joining into this as well. And uh, the United States is working on bringing partners in. As I also mentioned to you, they're going to use Iran. They're partnering with Iran as well uh, to, quote, unquote, wipe out ISIS. And that's kind of ironic because Obama, a Sunni, has actually helped fund ISIS and get them all trained. And now, of course, they're going to do the counter reaction. Now they created the problem, so now they've got to solve the problem and they're going to have to defeat them. Uh, uh, Iraq and Syria, they say there is no longer a border. It has actually just become one open big country now. And of course, on the Golan, that's where our correspondent Esther is, is right there on the Golan border there. Uh, they're, they're constantly spilling over into Israel. Israel has moved their forces up there. Now, as I begin to look at this, and I begin to, to analyze the things that are taking place, it's kind of ironic. The French, who hate the Jews, are joining into the coalition. Obama certainly doesn't like Israel either. And um, not to say the Americans don't, because we have literally millions of Americans that love Israel. And we thank God for you. Uh, but uh, we see this coalition very interestingly lining up. And of course, Russia telling America they need to take heed about what they do. Now, it seems like everybody's against ISIS right now, but it appears to be that we may see that the, the spillover comes into Israel. And this is where the grounds on the troop ends up at. And uh, whether or not Israel wants a predetermined uh, pre-1967 border or not may not matter at all. In fact, ironically, and I'll go into this a little bit later, I got an email. It had been some time back, but I hadn't read it till now. A brother had asked me about Zephaniah chapter 2. Did I believe that this is prophecy being fulfilled? I think what we're about to see may very well have a lot to do with Zephaniah chapter 2, the prophecies there. And one particular scripture of interest is verse 7. It talks about Judah actually having planning on the coast and in the fields there of Israel. Now, can't say for sure as of yet, I haven't had a chance to really go deeper into this passage, but could that be the part of pushing Israel back to a pre-1967 border? Well, nonetheless, even if it is, we're about to see two witnesses come on the scene. It's the only way God, God will have to intervene at that point there. We'll be speaking, uh, hopefully, this Shabbat uh, service with Brother Rick on the two witnesses. He has some very fascinating insight that he has shared with me that I can't wait to bring to you. So I'd like to bring him on this coming uh, Saturday, Shabbat Live. Look it up at our website, IsraelReturns.com. Uh, there will be a link there for you where you can get to the program, listen to it live, or you'll be able to catch it on YouTube a little bit later in the day. Uh, and secondly, let me just... Uh, in the closing of the news broadcast here, let me let you know the borders in the South that were open has allowed ISIS to get into America. This is why the president is uh, talking about defeating ISIS on the ground, of course, overseas, but we're fixing to face that threat here. That's what Fox News was bringing out today, that they're expecting a major terror attack on September 11th. Now, it could be just a little trial run for martial law in this country. 
Not sure exactly what's going to happen, uh, but uh, if they do, and we know that ISIS is here in America, uh, it's been reported already, it's on secular media, so anytime it gets to secular media, you know it's a fact. They finally start telling the truth for once. Uh, but anyway, Newsmax, I believe, does try to bring out more truthful, truthful stories pretty much than any other news outlet that there is. Uh, but uh, Fox News is actually reporting this now. So anyhow, um, let's bring Brother Rick on. Rick, Rick uh, former Navy SEAL from Texas, uh, to get his insights on the events that are transpiring now. Brother Rick, God bless you. We have Brother Rick from Houston, Texas. Um, Brother Rick, have you been catching up on the, the events that are going on uh, all over the world? I mean, it's been shocking to us to see. Uh, the, Obama made the speech today. Um, we caught it, I believe, it was on Newsmax, where he is talking about having to put boots on the ground to be able to uh, fight ISIS over in the Middle East. And France, of course, is uh, vowing to join into the coalition. And uh, we hear Iran is as well. want to get your insight, your thoughts on some of these things. Yeah, I was uh, reading this morning about the, the pact that we may be making with Iran right now. Um, and I'll keep it brief, but it was uh, the U.S. is thinking that uh, Iran agreed to join an alliance with the U.S. to fight ISIS. Um, my view on that is, is, is this, this is, again, this, this is all about Israel. It's sending a message to Israel that you're going to have to strike Iran, uh, if they develop nuclear weapons. I think it has much more to do with that than anything to do with ISIS. If we wanted to destroy ISIS, we could do it very quickly in Gulf one and in Gulf two and in 48 hours of both, we completely destroyed the infrastructure basically of the entire country. So I think it's, uh, I think it's a smokescreen. Um, and I think, uh, I know that the talks with Iran, Iran is not giving in an inch on the, uh, on the enrichment of the plutonium, uh, the nuclear materials for a bomb. They're not giving in at all. Those talks aren't going well. And now we're going to be aligning ourselves with them, which is doing a deal with the devil and at the same time turning our backs on Israel. And I think it's as simple as that. You're exactly right. And uh, one thing that I find interesting is that if we align ourselves with an, as an ally of Iran, who is the staunch enemy, uh, only second to that of uh, Rome, uh, Rome has been Israel's enemies for the, for the for last uh, a little over 2,000 years, but with Iran, they're the, they're the second largest enemy that Israel faces. And, uh, and, and Obama, excuse me, not Obama, but uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu had already said that uh, they had been intending to strike in the very near future. Well, what do you do there when you've got Israel's enemy being an ally with the United States? And like you said, it's all a pretext. I have a feeling that they're going to invade uh, uh, Israel from the Golan in that area there, pushing back Israel. And uh, I haven't really had a chance to look deeply into Zephaniah chapter 2 as of yet, but in verse 7, it appears to be that that might indicate that the house of Judah, which is there now, will actually be living on the coastline there. But I can't say that for certain as of yet. I just got a brief look at that. Uh, but one other thing real quick, Brother Rick, as far as the United States, uh, there is uh, Fox News is reporting that we should be at DEFCON 1, which is a, a, a terrorist threat level. And uh, because they say that ISIS is here in America, and uh, what do you think, what, what it was just your, any kind of opinion you might have on that in, in any direction you'd like to take that? I think we gave them an invitation. We've flown them in. We've, we've let them come across the border. We've housed them, and we sent them on buses with money and shipped them around the country. We've invited them in. You're right. It's, it's, it's no different than Iran. We're, we're doing deals with the devil. And uh, we're turning our back on the people we should be supporting, and we are doing deals with all the people that we shouldn't. And, I'm, and, and, I, and I hate to say this, but I just think it's true um, that the United States, is it, it's becoming part of the beast. So that's just the reality of it. All nations will turn against Israel. And um, you know, my wife, I'll just say this very quickly, my wife said, well, we were talking about the United States and all these red lines that we've... We've thrown out there and people have crossed the red lines. She said, well, who's afraid of the United States anymore? And I thought about it for a minute and I said, there's one country that I can think of that's afraid of the United States, and that's Israel. 
We've been their supporter throughout history, and now we're pulling the support and we're turning our backs on them. And um, I think if they have a country to fear, it's us. I couldn't agree with you more. I cannot agree with you more because, you know, and the sad thing is, is and we know that this isn't the, oh gosh, I think they said there's something like 8 million Christians in America that actually support the Jewish people. But unfortunately, uh, the, the true Christians that support Israel have become the minority and the replacement theologists and the secular beliefs that are here in this country and the Muslim communities have all been able to influence the politics now as the new majority and they're rapidly, uh, that's exactly what's brought the, the outcome uh, that we have in the administration today. I agree. And uh, we voted them in. So what, what can you say? We're Amen. getting what we asked for. <laughs> You got that right. Exactly. Well, Brother Rick, God bless you. Thank you for joining us here. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll touch base again later today. Thanks, Stephen. God bless you and all the listeners. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You could not have been, uh, or let me put it this way here, Brother Rick could not have been more blunt in telling it just like it is. That is the cold, hard truth. Uh, America... The, the truly the only ally that Israel has in America are those of you, the Christian believers, that still love Israel. And at this point here, the only force that we have is your prayers, your support for Israel, prayerfully, however else God may lead you, but that is the support that we have now. And it's the only, this, this, it's really what's left. It's what's going to bring about the events that are going to unfold here in the next uh, few years. And speaking of that, uh, again, uh, I haven't talked to Brother Rick to confirm it as of yet, but I'm hoping that we will have uh, him on for Shabbat live service, which will be tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States. And uh, we will be discussing uh, basically the whole seven years, but we're going to focus on the two witnesses, uh, the, the closing of that time, because I feel like Brother Rick is of the same mind you may see, I know that I told recently, I said, you know, we could already be in it for all that I know because of the fact that Rome is actually doing communion service in King David's tomb. But that could be just a precursor. Uh, but we may see that this Yom Kippur, less than 30 days away, might be the very advent of Daniel's 70th week. I'm Stephen Ben-Danun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Baruch Hashem.